I'm Miss Renee, and I want to welcome you to Camp Victory's Pond. Today we are going to learn about pond ecosystems, food chains, and the diversity of the pond here at Camp Victory. So, what is an ecosystem? And I'm going to have my friend Jude come over here and help answer some of my questions. Do you know what a pond ecosystem is? No. Okay. Well, a pond ecosystem is a geographical area, so it's a place, where plants, animals, and organisms live and it is affected by weather and outside sources as if there's a big giant bubble over it. So at Camp Victory here, our pond, if you can imagine a big giant bubble, that is our pond ecosystem. So where we're standing, is that part of it? No, because the pond's part of it. The pond is part of it, but it also includes the land surrounding it, oh. as well as the animals and other organisms. All right, so that's our pond ecosystem. Do you know what a pond is? A pond is a body of water that's sometimes still. Yeah, very good, he's very close. A pond is a small body of water, right? Because if it was bigger, it would probably be a lake or an ocean. So a pond is a small body of water and it is not moving like a river or a creek, it's pretty still. Now you do see movement on top of the water, but that's just the wind moving it, right? Not another yeah. source. And what's it surrounded by? What are we standing on? Earth. Right, it's Grass. surrounded by land. Grass. You got it, perfect. And what is pond ecology? Do you know what pond ecology is? Okay. Well, ecology is the study of interactions of organisms and the environment. So the pond ecology would be the interactions of the pond life with the surrounding environment. So that's the ecology. Now, we wanna take a real close look at our pond. So come on in and let's see what we see. Good. Okay, while we're looking in our pond, do we see something floating around in there, Jude? Yeah, there's algae, I think. And what is algae? Is the green stuff, right? Yeah. So what is algae? I don't know. What did you think it was? Tell me what. I thought it was going to be, um, like, fungus. It's not floating. Not a fungus. What other things are green? What? Um, grass. And they are a? Plant. Plants. You got it. Yeah. So, the algae in our pond is a plant. What do plants need to grow? Um, soil. Some of them. Water. Is the algae in soil? No. Nope, but you got it. Water. And sun. Sun, yep, we need the sun. And, and also need temperature air. Temperature is important. That's also part of the uh, ecosystem. But it also needs nutrients, right? If plants don't have nutrients, they can't feed themselves. Alright, we'll stop there. Okay, so Jude and I just learned that algae is a plant. Do you eat algae, Jude? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys eat algae? Yeah, I think I have. <laughs> Everyone says they don't, but guess what? You eat algae. Algae is actually in dairy products such as cheese or everyone's favorite in the summer, ice cream. So the next time you stop at your local Tasty Freeze and have an ice cream, just remember there's algae in there. Jude, do you know what we call it when plants make food for themselves? They take that energy from the sun and the nutrients and make their own food? Do you guys know what that's called? It's called photosynthesis. Synthesis. Photosynthesis is when plants take the sun's heat and energy, it goes into the plant, and then the plant uses that energy to make its own food. So it will change water and carbon dioxide into sugars to feed itself. <laughs> Now, do we as humans, do we make our own food? Nope. No, we don't. Now, we may prepare our own food or cook our own food, but we don't actually make it within our own bodies. Kill the plants and animals to make it. Right, we use plants and animals to make our energy, right? Uh -huh. 
So do you think that in our pond, the plants are important? Mm -hmm. Yes, because they're at the base of our food chain. So they are the very beginning of the flow of energy. So all the plants, like the algae, in our pond are the base of our food chain. Okay, now we're gonna build a food pyramid to represent different uh, food chains layers in our pond. So, what do we start with? What's the, besides the sun? The sun makes what grow? Plants. Plants, and we call them? Producers. Con producers. I was just going to say consumers. <laughs> Animals are consumers. Yep, they're the producers. So, when we look at a pond, and our pond here at Camp Victory, what are the plants in our pond? Yeah, we have algae, and there's not just one kind of algae, there's many species of algae. So besides the algae, what else do we see? What's growing? It doesn't, remember, it doesn't have to be necessarily in the pond, but even on the edges. What do we see growing around the edges? Grass. Yeah, there's different kinds of grasses. You see that every day. And there's different kinds of aquatic grasses, right? So all like these, seaweed. yeah, well not seaweed, because where does seaweed grow? But does it grow in a pond? No, it grows in the ocean. Right, which that is another important fact is, what kind of water is in the ocean? A lot of salt. Right, salt water. But usually ponds, especially here in Pennsylvania, are what we call fresh water. Fresh Yep, there's no salt, so it's a freshwater pond. So unfortunately, there will be no seaweed or sharks in the Camp Victory uh -huh. Pond. Um, but we do have our good fishing guys. Nope. But we do have our different algaes and our aquatic grasses and the grasses that grow along the pond. And the herbivores will come along and start eating these things. What's an herbivore that might eat the grass? Mm. Or the algae? Bunnies. Bunnies, yeah. And some underwater Creatures. Yes, underwater creatures, which are mostly what we're going to find today. There's all kinds of insects hiding in our pond and the algae. Um, what was flying over our pond this morning? A lot of geese. Geese, right. So the geese might come along and slurp up some of that algae and plants. What else do you think might be plants in the pond? What did you tell her we threw in the pond? Right? Yeah, what did you? Oh, a turtle! Yes, a turtle! There are turtles in Camp Victory's pond. And they will eat the plants. Now, what's going to come along and eat a bunny? Oh, another important one is a fish. We got fish in that oh. pond, right? Wait, we, we got fish? We got fish. Oh. So some of the baby fish, like minnows, will eat algae and plants. Yeah, I should put algae on my lawn whenever I'm fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's work. So what would come along and eat a rabbit? Now remember, it doesn't have to live in the pond. It's in that bubble that surrounds the pond. So these could be land creatures or air creatures. Bears. Bears could come along and eat a rabbit. Mm. What would come mountain along? Mountain lions? Well, technically, they say there's no mountain lions in Pennsylvania. Oh, something similar. Something similar. No, there's no jaguar in the Starts with the letter C, dude. A cat. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there could be a cat that came I, along. One time, my cat Rocky just came in and killed a bunny, baby bunny, and just ate him. They do that because what are they? What are cats on that? Are they? They're secondary consumers, so they are. Right, carnivores. So your cats are carnivores. Even your adorable fluffy cats at home. <laughs> They do eat meat, they will eat bunnies, and they will eat Bugs. birds, and they will eat mice. But what do you think might fly over that pond and come swoop up a fish? Eagles. Yes! Well, you see those, right? The eagles, and there are eagles around Camp Victory's pond. Uh, what might come along and say eat a turtle or a frog out of the pond? Hmm. Sometimes they wear a mask. Well, usually they wear a mask and have rings on their tails. Oh, raccoons. Raccoons, yes. So. Yeah, what would eat raccoons? What would eat a raccoon? I mean, we don't I eat eagles eat because the eagle is our, but who's usually at the top of the food chain? Hmm. Mostly like dinosaurs and like those kind of types of animals. Right, dinosaurs could. Like only eat meat. 
Yep. But they, they don't really exist, they anymore. Don't exist anymore. But who dominates the world and eats plants Lion. and animals? Wait, plants and animals? Yep. Bears. Yep, bears. bears. But they also live in every part of the world. And they stand on two feet. Oh, well. Oh, no. The famous camp win victory win <laughs> happens every year. So what's at the very tippy top? Um, what are you and I? Oh, humans. Humans, yes. The humans are usually the very tippy top of our food chain. And what would come in and eat a bird, like a goose. Um, something that could eat a goose would be like, if, a, if an owl was very hungry, it would just come along and swoop up a goose and it's well, maybe not a goose, because that's pretty big for them, but owls are also carnivores. Yeah. And they only eat meat, and certain species of owls will eat other owls. Pretty gruesome, isn't it? Okay, so. It's just an animal world. It is. <laughs> Do you know what an invasive species is? An invasive species. Is it like us? Not us. Do you guys know what an invasive species is? Well, I'll tell you. An invasive species is an animal or insect or a plant that is not from our area. It comes from somewhere else, which means it has no natural predators and it can take over because there's nothing to keep it in check. It can exist in our environment and flourish. Um, so an example could be like an algae. There are some algae that are invasive to our area. So if I put an invasive algae in that pond, what do you think would happen to our food pyramid? It would all just get destroyed because all the algae would just come in and just destroy it. Right, so that algae would pretty much take over <laughs> and then we, we may have a few other species that can survive in the pond, but if there's too much algae in a pond, it reduces the amount of oxygen, which doesn't allow certain fish to breathe, um, we might still have macroinvertebrates that can survive in there. And, yeah, and there might be little critters that are bigger that can survive on the outside to come eat. But an invasive species can really change our food pyramid. But back to our food chain. Back to our food chain. So in our pond, we have algae and we have grasses, we have turtles, fish, insects. We have either bear and fox or eagles coming and eating. What if I decided, I think there's too much algae in the pond, so I'm gonna come in tomorrow and put some chemicals in there to kill it all. What happens to our food pyramid then? It breaks. Right, it breaks. breaks. Most people think that the whole food pyramid will just crumble. You killed the algae, it's all over. But we have more than just algae in there, right? We have other grasses and aquatic plants, and maybe there's a species of algae that is immune to the chemical that I use. So the food pyramid will still stand. It's just like us, yeah, like us as humans. If you wanted McDonald's for dinner tonight and they were closed, every McDonald's on the planet shut down, would you give up and fall over and die of hunger? Nope. No. I would go somewhere else because I don't would, really like it. You would go somewhere else. Just like with this pyramid, if we killed the algae, yeah, the algae would die. And maybe some of the critters, if they can't get out of the pond and walk away, they might perish because they don't have. But that bird, is that bird going to die? Nope. No, he's going to fly away. And if it was, you know, say, a rabbit eating the plants, he's just going to hop somewhere else and get some food. Yep. So unless it's the algae or a critter that can't get out of the water and move, the food pyramid will still be fine. Now, after time, do you think it'll stay this way or do you think the food pyramid will grow again? Probably grow again. Right, once those chemicals are gone, the algae's gonna keep producing, the frogs are gonna get happier. Oh, two of those, that's okay. <laughs> They're gonna get happier. Once there's more fish and frogs, there's Birds gonna be- Birds are gonna come in. Yeah, just bigger food. predators. Yeah. So your food chain or food pyramid will change over time. Uh, you know, if something comes in and we have a tornado. Oh no! And it oh, no. shrinks your food oh, chain. No. Over time, that food pyramid or food oh, chain. Oh, oh well. Or, or the wind. The, wind. Off the wind comes and blows yeah. everything away. Okay. Today at Camp Victory, while we explore the diversity of this pond, we are mainly going to find what we call macroinvertebrates. 
and we have a key here also that's going to show us all the different things that live in the pond. We're going to use this key to identify them. Now a macroinvertebrate is something that is big enough that you can see with your eyes. And what's an invertebrate? Do you know what an invertebrate is, Jim? It's a non-backbone creature. Right, invertebrates have no backbones. So in the animal kingdom, it consists of invertebrates, mammals, amphibians, fish, reptiles, and birds. Invertebrates, which have no backbone, are the most common, making up 95% of the animal kingdom. Us humans, only are mammals, not even just humans, but all mammals, only make up 5%. That's a lot of invertebrates, isn't it? And out of the invertebrates, 71% are insects. That's a lot of bugs, isn't it? So with insects, they have no backbone. They have wings. How many legs do insects have, do you know? They could have 10 legs, they could have, wait, insects have insects. six legs. Yes, insects have six legs, that's right. You got it, that's perfect. And do you know the three main body parts of an insect? Uh, head, the thorax, the abdomen. Yes, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen are the parts of the insects. And I did learn a silly little game. You remember head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Well, in the insect world, it's head, thorax, abdomen. <laughs> so those are the parts of the insects. Um, and on insects, the thorax part is where it, the adult wings will come out. So a lot of these macroinvertebrates we find today in our pond um, go through what we call simple metamorphosism. Do you know what metamorphosism is? It's like a butterfly where it has like those couple stages. Right, it has different stages of life. Um, so a butterfly is what we call a complex metamorphosism. So they start as an egg, then they go to a larva, and they eat and eat and eat. Caterpillar. Yeah, they go to a, a, a larva to a pupa. Pupa. Which is when they form their little cocoon. A butterfly. And then a butterfly. But most of the insects we find today go through what we call incomplete or simple metamorphosism, and that is when they are just an egg, a larva, and then an adult. But what's amazing is a lot of the things we're gonna find today spend their life as an egg and a larva in the water, but when they're an adult, they live out of the water and around the pond. Oh, so like dragonflies, like they live most of, their, most of their life in here, but then when they're ready, they just come out and fly around. Right. We're gonna show you how we dig into our pond to find these macroinvertebrates. Okay, so now we're gonna explore our pond. What do all these critters live in? Pond. The pond, which is full of? Microbi microorganisms. Or water. Or water. Water. So the first thing we need to do is put some water in a bucket. So you just very gently lean over and you want to try not to get the water muddy. And we're just going to put a little bit of water in the bucket so that while we find these critters, they can stay in their happy environment of water. Oh, gosh, it's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. So, a lot of these critters are hiding. What do you call it when something blends into its environment? Um, I think you call it um, camouflage. Camouflage, yes. Just like when people go hunting, they'll wear camouflage. So they blend in. And some people go in trees. Yep, and hide in trees. So these critters are hiding in mostly the mud of the pond. And they're going to blend in very well because they're camouflaged because they don't want to be eaten. So what we need to do is we take our net and we come to the side of the pond and we're just going to very gently jiggle all that mud and dirt into our net. I didn't get that much mud, but whoa. Yep, we might need to pick another spot of the pond. But then I when you, get good. oh look, you see things moving here? Okay, so let me see. You'll start to see things moving 
in the mud. Now he's camouflaged really good, isn't he? He just looks like mud. Oh my gosh. And we'll put them in our bucket. You want to try to keep the water in your bucket as clean as possible. There's something else. You can see it's stuck on the grass. And that key that we had earlier will help us identify <laughs> everything we're finding. So you gotta dig through it. So this is the part that is the most fun and I'm so sorry that you're not here at camp with us to dig in the mud, which I'm sure most of you right now are like, oh, that's gross, I don't wanna do it. But trust me, if you were here, you would have a lot of fun. I found something. Yeah, so as you find them, put them in your bucket. Bug. You got it, that's a bug. Wait, is that the one that you got? It is, it might be. Exactly. It might be exactly the same. Then when we're exactly. done, this is really important. You wanna watch, Jude? When we're done, do I wanna drop this from up here to return it? No. No, cause that's like dropping insects off them. a skyscraper. Don't you don't wanna hurt them. So you just wanna come back down near the water and jiggle it out and then take another scoop of mud and debris and all this good stuff along the pond and keep looking for insects. So we're gonna dig around here a little bit more and fill our buckets, and then we're gonna identify everything we found and decide whether Camp Victory's pond has a good diversity or not. Okay, so we went digging in our pond here at Camp Victory. Normally we do this in May, which now we're doing in early April. Um, so we did not find as many species as we normally find in our pond. As you can see, we do have some fish floating around in there. Uh, this guy right here, you can see by his little stingers on his face, that is a catfish. Uh, the smaller fish might be minnow. Uh, they might just be baby fish. I'm not exactly sure on the species. Um, but normally we find a lot more different species throughout the pond. Um, like I said, it could be because it's early, so they're cold and still hiding in the mud, and we just couldn't get to deep enough areas to find them. We also had a lot of rain, so it might have moved them out more into the middle of the pond instead of the edge of the pond where we normally find them. Um, but one of our missions today was to decide if we had good diversity in our pond here at Camp Victory. Jude, do you know what diversity means? Um... It's, but if we have good, like, things to help the creatures? Not really things to help, but diversity really means different. So we want different amounts, different species. Well, we definitely got so different species. So if we species. found, we got different species, like right? Cat. Now, um, like this tray over here, you can see, is that the one? No, it's this one. This has a lot. What are these in there? They are small, small, small. We have um, this chart here, remember? Now this chart not only has small pictures, orb snail. right, but it also has writing on it to describe. So a lot of times when you catch a critter, you're like, oh, he looks like this or he looks like that, but you really do need to read the description sometimes. But yeah, he's an orb snail, and look at all the orb snails we found in just a few scoops. There's big ones, there's small ones, but is this tray showing diversity? Most of this tray is orb snails, correct? Yep. So it's not actually a lot of diversity because they're all the same. Yeah. Right. But over here we got a what? leech. Yes, we have a, a creepy leech. Creepy little leech. And the leech, is he's pretty big. Yeah, Look at how large one. that leech is. He's a big dude. And we often find leeches in our pond here and he is actually a category um, that we didn't discuss. What do leeches eat? They suck blood if you right. let them on you, which I'm never gonna let it on me. They suck blood. So what does, do you know what we call things that attach themselves to other critters and suck blood? Like a tick would be one, a leech would be one. I don't know. They're called parasites. Parasites. Because they latch on and nasty they feed off a host by eating their blood, drinking their blood. And then in this little tray, we have two little worm-looking critters. Can I use the... So we, yep. We have two little worm critter, critters in there, and they're very red. So when we go to our chart, we do have, look, worm-like critters. Worm-like critters. Now, he's not a leech, we know that. No. Does he have a segmented body? Segmented body? I don't really know. 
know what segmented means. Segments is like sections. No. He kind of does look like he. Oh, look, like he has like those. Yeah, little tires. sections. Yeah, okay. What so color is he? Red. He's red. Okay, well, this one could be red or brown. So it might be that dude? a tubic fix worm. Are any of the rest of them red? What's this one? Small S shape. Nope, he's not a nematode. Um, distinct red or green and twist. Oh, and look, you can see his little head. You see his little head? Aha, uh -huh, that's the one. That's the dude. So he's a midget larva. A midget larva. Now, a lot of times here at Camp Victory, we do find leeches. We do find the midget larva. But we also tend to find a lot of horsehair worms and nematode or thread worms. Now, we might not have found them today because it is early in this season. Yes, it is. Um, the pond is very clean. Usually there's a lot more sediment along the sides, so that could be the reason that we're not finding as many critters in the pond. Um, we did not find any uh, diving beetles, back swimmers, or giant water bugs, which we normally find tons of those in the pond. Um, giant water bugs are a really cool insect. They're known as toe biters because they have these pinchers in their front, and they're usually about an inch big. Um, a I lot hope of don't pinch you. And if they tend not to, they can if you were walking around the pond and were to threaten it by stepping on it, but they oh. usually don't pinch. Um, and giant water bugs are a lot of fun to find in our pond because they'll have all these bumps on their backs, and those little bumps are actually the aches. And do you think it's the female or the male that carries the eggs around? Male. It's the male, that's right. In the giant water bug species, the female will lay the eggs on the back of the male because he will protect them while they're in the water. Um, unfortunately, like I said, we did not find any giant water bugs, back swimmers, or boatmans today. In the past, we have found one or two of these very cool water scorpions, both species. Um, we did not find any of those today. Um, but we do have these here that we need to identify. Oh, <laughs> I don't think they might be on there. So they're on here, and I'll give you a hint. They're on the bottom. So do they have a tail? No, no. No, no obvious tail, so it has to be one of these. Okay. Now, if it so this is the literally the only one that looks exactly like them, so I bet it's the dragonfly larva. <gasps> that we is a dragonfly larva. That is a dragonfly. So a dragonfly starts out as an egg, and then this is the larva stage. They will live in the water. Some He's species. He's a smaller one. Yep, some species He's younger. will live in the water for one to three years. That's a really long time. I would not want to live in the water. No. Three years, especially in what cold. Yep, and water then they come scorpion. out of the water. And this little guy here, you can see, here, let me see that spoon. This is the thorax area where his wings will pop out. These guys oh. are a little small, so it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bump there. And what he'll do is he'll leave the I pond. He'll hang out on the pavilion here at Camp Victory or on a piece of grass near the pond. And that is where the adult will hatch out. So when he comes out of the water, he'll hang out there for a couple days. Then he'll crack his exoskeleton, oh, which that's insects have an exoskeleton, right? A skeleton on the outside, not the inside like us. And he will emerge as an adult flying insect. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And it looks like we have a male and a female. And do you know how I know the difference? Because of their heads? Nope, not their heads. But you see how this one is more rounded on the abdomen? And this one's more pointy? Yeah. That's the difference. Usually when they're larger, it's easier to oh my see. Gosh. But this she's guy. more rounded, where this one kind of comes down to a point. Um, one other critter that we tend to find a lot of in the ponds that we did not find today are damselfly larvae. Do you know what a damselfly is? No. Do you know what a dragonfly is? Uh, second stage of him? Well, no. Do you know what a dragonfly looks like on land when they fly around? Yeah. So a lot of times you'll see a damselfly and call it a dragonfly because they look very similar. Some of the differences between a damselfly and a dragonfly. It's because they don't have wings? 
Nope, because they will. They'll also leave the water and turn into an adult, just like a dragonfly. Three tails. But a dragonfly, their eyes will always touch, where a damselfly has little space between their eyes. If yeah. they landed on a blade of grass, you would see their eyes peeking between it. <laughs> Another difference is when a dragonfly lands alongside of a pond, its wings are always out to its side flat, where a damselfly will have their wings closed behind their back. And like I said, most people assume that all, they're all dragonflies, but a lot of them are also damselflies. Um, another species we tend to find in the pond that we did not find today are the mayflies. And mayflies are super important in Pennsylvania for trout fishermen because the trout love mayfly, whether it's the larva or the adult hatching or the adult going to the water to lay their eggs. And they come out of the pond depending on the perfect temperature of that year. So they'll hatch when the temperature is just right. So that's when you know to go trout fishing with mayfly either as the bait or the mayfly, um, what do you call them? Lures, mayfly lures, because that's when the trout will really be biting. Um, so today, like I said, it may be early, and that's why we did not find as many species as we normally do, but we did find a catfish. What's, th what's this here? A clam. Is it a clam? It's either What does the chart say? Um, if it looks like Two that, to eight inches, dark in color. Limpid. I think it's limpid. Not a limpid, because they're cylindrical. But look, he's two to eight inches, right? He's pretty big yeah. and dark in color, so that's a freshwater mussel. I thought it was going to be a limpid because of the shape of it. No, that's a mussel. And you can see this one's empty. So that means something came along either in the pond, whether it was a duck, some type of bird, um, a raccoon. Yeah, that's what I said. I haven't be. seen beavers here, but a beaver um, hmm, could have cool. come along, and he probably had a nice mussel dinner, didn't he? Dinner, lunch, or breakfast. Yep, dinner, lunch, or breakfast. Um, so we have a mussel. We have a few little minnows. We have a catfish. We got a whole got a lot, of lot of orbs. A couple dragonflies and a leech. Um, one other thing I that... I do not like the leech. I didn't know how one is. I did not. <laughs> Most don't one. like the leech. And then we were finding lots of these in the pond. And they're on the leaves and the grass. And you thought they were what? Uh, eggs. Frog eggs, right? Yeah. But they're not frog eggs. They're usually laid in a mass in the water. Uh, but what do we have a lot of in the pond the most of? What do we have the most of here? Oh, it's the eggs that... They're snail they eggs, yes. Snail so the snails will lay their eggs on plants or leaves, and you can see right there's a pouch snail, which is a different variety than the orb snail, um, but they will lay their eggs on the leaves, and we will find tons of snail eggs <laughs> every year here at Camp Victory. Oh, I think one's moving. That one's the snail. That one's moving. He's a pouch snail. That needs to move. Oh, there's another one that we have. There's another leaf. There's a couple other leaves. There are. There's a couple leaves that um, are a couple of leaves. leaves. As you can see, there's oh, wow. just oh, there's some upside like flip it on upside both down. sides. Yeah, oh, they just gosh. lay their eggs on the leaves everywhere. Yep. Everywhere. Everywhere. The catfish might eat them. There you go. Just really do. So, from what we found today. Do you think that Camp Victory's pond is got a lot of diversity, uh, or not so much? Um, in the middle, kind of, because there is a lot of other animals that we found, but not all of these animals. Like that's a lot. In the middle is probably like half of them, but we have like a quarter of them. Right. And now, does that mean that these animals I normally find here that we didn't find today? Does that mean they're just not here anymore? No, it just means that they might have just like hid and got dug in the middle, in the middle of the pond yeah. because it's very cold. They most likely are still here. There's a few reasons. Number one is normally we do this in May. It's a lot warmer. Uh, the water's a little bit not as high, so we can reach further out into the mud. Um, and also, no one has dug in this pond in two years. 
Um, so the pond ecology, remember that ecology of the animals and the plants and the organisms and the environment may have changed the pond and maybe some of these critters aren't here anymore. Um, or maybe we just didn't find them today due to temperature and time of the year. Yeah, it is kind of cold. Yes, it was very cold this morning. Um, so it, our pond, I would say, has an okay diversity. Okay. It's okay. okay. We do have fish and we got snails and we found some drags. So we did find a few different species. Yeah. But we're also finding a lot of the same species. When it's the same, it's not very diverse, right? Yeah, it's not that fun to find others. Yeah. Like, it would be more fun if we found, like, more of these. Yeah, some the of the cold. beetles. Yes. And it just might be, right now, the beetles might just be eggs in the water. It's and they haven't hatched yet because it's not warm enough. Not time, too. Yeah, so even seasonally, your pond ecosystem will change, just like any environment. You know, your environment is completely different throughout the seasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the winter, the bears aren't in the backyard and the deers <laughs> are still roaming, but they're kind of nestled down. You don't see as much when it's cold. There's not as much food Did for them to eat. Did we talk about the red bugs? Yep, the red, bugs? The red worms. The red worms? Yep, those were the midget larvae. Um, so this year, with this study, I would say the diversity is kind of low here at Camp Victory. It's okay, not it's not good. horrible. Um, but in April, the diversity is not as abundant as it has been in past Mays here at Camp Victory. Um, and I do know that I'm assuming these were sent to the classrooms. We do have this lovely worksheet here. So we're just gonna go over this really quick with you so you know how to fill it in and answer it. Okay, the first question, I think blank lives here. What do you think lives in that pond, or what do we know lives in that pond? Catfish. Catfish, yes. So it could be a catfish lives here, a frog lives here, a turtle lives here, a dragonfly, mayfly, damselfly. You can pick what lives there. And why does it live there? Because... Why would that catfish live in that pond? Because there's enough food for it. Right, it's got the perfect environment, right? It's got food, it's got the water it needs to survive. So that catfish will live in that pond, whether it's the catfish, the frog, the turtle, they all live in that pond because it's the perfect environment. It has food for it to eat, it has the sun, it has the water that allows it to survive in there. And how does this animal, so yours is a catfish, survive what, by eating what? What does your catfish eat? Do you think he eats algae? Or do you think he eats other, some other other types of the fish? That yeah, we have. he's eating the other little insects we caught. He's eating the dragonflies. He's eating the minnows. Um, if you got a dragonfly, they are actually also carnivores as larvae. So he could be eating smaller uh, freshwater shrimp. Um, if you got a damselfly or you chose mayfly, they tend to eat algae and small plankton in the water. Um, frogs, the tadpoles eat algae, the adult frog would eat insects. Um, and on to our food chain, that famous food chain we learned all about. So it starts with the sun, and what does the sun give to the plants? Do you remember? It gives food and energy to the plants. It gives yep, heat and energy. Right? Because so, right now you can feel the sun on your back on this cold day, right? Yes. So inside your sun, you can write heat and energy. And then our, our producers in the pond. What is the producer in the pond? The producer in the pond is the, the plant. What, yeah, what plant did we have in our pond? Algae. Algae is the number one producer in our pond because the algae is throughout the whole pond. There are other plants like water lilies and water grasses, but they tend to grow on the edges usually more. Okay, so we have our algae. And then we need an herbivore. What's an herbivore that would come eat our algae? Oh, the herbivore would be like a mayfly. Like you yeah, said. mayfly larva. 
So the mayfly larva or a stonefly, um, little tadpoles, they would be your herbivore in the water. And what's a carnivore that would come eat our mayfly? Mm, probably like the catfish. A catfish, or even more famously, what did I mention earlier? Do you remember the fish that a lot of Pennsylvania people like to fish for? A minnow? Not a minnow, a trout. Oh, a trout. Especially if you catch a native brook trout, you feel like you're on top of the world because catching trout in Pennsylvania creeks isn't as easy as you think. Um, they are very well adapted to their environment and are very well camouflaged. And even walking along a creek, if a trout sees you, he's going to hide and he's not going to want to eat your bait. That's anyway, he is going to see you and you wouldn't be able to see him. You could just walk by him and be like, yeah, and he's going to hide. But if you use a mayfly um, lure, you're more likely to catch them because that's their natural food source. Natural food source. So that's good. Yeah. So at the end, the top... Pyramid carnivore, the complete meat eater. What's going to come along and eat a trout? Wait, uh, the complete meat eater? Yeah, well, not complete, but the top of our food chain. So, uh, yeah. what's it could be an omnivore that comes along to eat the trout. He might have a salad with his trout. But what do you think will come eat a trout out of our pond? Probably like one of those big catfish. Not a big catfish. Think outside of the pond. What do you think would come along outside of the pond and I eat think a trout? An eagle would just come in. Yes, an eagle. I think a human. A human, an eagle, a bear. A bear would love a trout. So they're the top predators that would come along. Yep, now. And then you can choose the animal that you would like to draw in that circle. And it could even be, since you weren't here with us at Camp Victory to experience it, any pond critter of your choice. You can choose to draw a turtle, a frog, maybe one of the macaron vertebrates we saw, maybe a leech. Um, but you can draw your favorite animal in there. And then the last question here is, what does that say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it gets shelter by. What would a lot of these macroinvertebrates that we found today get sheltered by. What were we finding them in? Dirt. Dirt. They were Dirt. hiding in the mud. They were leeches, loved to hide in the leaves that fell into the pond. So the shelter in the pond could be empty clam shells. It could be the rocks. We do have boat docks here at Camp Victory, so some of the fish might go under those boat docks for shelter and shade. Um, they're hiding in the mud, they're hiding in the leaf matter, so they're just hiding in all kinds of shelter in that pond, huh? So that is the end of our pond study here at Camp Victory. I really wish you guys could have come out to our pond. We missed having you here this year. It really is a fun experience. But I hope this video at least helped you be interested and learn more about the things that hide in our freshwater ponds here in Pennsylvania. Jude and I would like to thank you for your time. Let's say bye. Bye. bye.